I knew this was a dumbass idea as soon as I heard it was in production. But I thought it was gonna be one of those trash movies that you could laugh at, like it's so bad it's funny. This wasn't one of those movies. I can't believe that somebody actually said that this is an unforgettable cinematic adventure introduction. What the fuck are you talking about? I think this person was paid to say that because there is no way like th there's just no way there's no way they was paid to say that had to be because after what i just watched this shit was not cinematic it was not an adventure it was none of that shit a cinematic introduction okay we'll see about that y'all know how we do it let's get into the movie so right off top when the movie opens they let us know they not gonna try because we immediately get this weak ass preschool animation while this is happening a narrator comes on and he tells us that one day christopher robin was walking in the woods and then he found piglet poo and the rest of the damn animal the narrator also tells us that these animals are able to talk because they're crossbreeds which doesn't make any sense and I shouldn't even have to go into why. Liberty of youth, Christopher ignored the dangers and befriended them all. The days turned to years, and with the years came maturity. Now that Christopher is older and he has to go to college, the animals are sad. During a bad winter, it got so bad because Christopher Robin wasn't there to bring them food anymore. It got so bad for them, you know, during this winter, they had to eat their friend Eeyore. And at this moment, I can't help but wonder to myself, what was y'all doing before he came along? So you telling me these animals lived in this habitat and didn't know how to survive until Christopher Robin brung his ass along. That does, man, all right. Oh yeah, my nigga Tigger not here, so that's good. Now we cut to present day and we see Christopher Robin as an adult and his girlfriend, Mary. He's trying to find the place where he used to hang out with the animals so he can show Mary that he wasn't lying about the stories he'd been telling her. And this part is so damn stupid. It's like the writers didn't know what they wanted. Cause Christopher and Mary just go back and forth. He's like, do you believe me? She's like, well, not really. And then he asked her again and she's like, I'm not saying you made it up. And then he's like, well, maybe you're right. Maybe it's like, what's going on? Do you think I made up those stories? Well, I don't think you've made it all up. Believe me? You believe they exist? Well, I didn't say that. Maybe you're right. Pooh! Come on, Mary, it's them. It's them. Once this happens, Mary immediately gets scared. I don't know what in the hell for because she just said she didn't believe it was real. Christopher, it's not safe. Christopher, we can't go in there. Pooh's fat ass walks in to take a nap. Oh, wait, before I continue, I forgot to mention that the reason that Pooh and Piglet kill is because they mad that Christopher left and they had to eat Eeyore. So they made a promise never to speak the human language again and hate humans or something like that it's stupid as hell but anyway back to what i was saying Pooh's fat ass walks in to take a nap and both of them start hiding and at this point i'm confused because he was just excited that Pooh was coming now he's fucking scared and he's hiding wait and they so terrified they hide until nighttime whenever they do finally try to sneak away piglet catches them slipping and proceeds to put mary on a shirt after this christopher basically says the same lines for the rest of the movie it's always please stop why are you doing this remember when we were younger no that's just what it is with him for the rest of the movie <laughs> So yeah, she's dead now. Now I ain't gonna lie, I did laugh at one thing in this movie though. That's the cheap ass production because this is supposed to be lightning. And you can tell that they just flashing lights. They said, fuck it, we gonna let you know off top. We ain't got no money for no CGI. So Pooh and Piglet end up cornering him. And we then get some more amazing animation of them dragging Christopher away. And now it's time for the opening title sequence.
Man, did y'all hear how scary and screechy that was? Insidious ain't got shit on this movie. We then cut to our so-called main character, Maria, in a therapy session because every horror movie now has to start with some woman getting a therapy session. We'll get into why she goes into therapy soon. But for now, she's just here talking about how she's so traumatized about what happened to her. And her therapist is like, you need to go somewhere far away, out with your friends, you know, no phones, an adventure. So you already see where this is going they're going into the fucking trope of going into the woods and no phones and your phone don't work and all that other stuff so it's the next day i guess and the whole friend group is here and i don't know who this woman is but she act like she's maria's therapist even though we just saw that this lady is her therapist does she have two therapists We'll never know. So one of the friends is lost and she can't find the house. Who ends up seeing her and then we get this boring ass chase scene. And why did this dummy drop her phone? That was so stupid. What's also stupid is that she runs into this garage and the only way out is through the front where he is. There's a lot of stuff in this garage that she can use as a weapon. But does she try to pick up anything? No, she just hides. You know what, let me just get this out the way. Everybody is here to die. That's all this movie is. Everybody is just here to get handed t-shirts. So yeah, Pooh ends up killing her by banging her head into a table and I can't show it. Not because it's graphic or anything, it's just because she doesn't have a shirt on. Meanwhile, back at the house, Maria tells her friends why she's in therapy. It's because some weirdo ass nigga was stalking her. And one night, he broke into her house and tried to undress her while she was asleep. But whenever she woke up screaming, he ran away and I guess she never saw him again. We see Christopher Robin again tied up and he's here delivering the same lines like I told y'all he would be doing. Please. <sighs> And I don't know what day it is because it just goes from day to night in this movie whenever it feels like it. And I guess Pooh starts feeling bad because he just looks in the mirror and then the camera slowly fades to black. I hate the way that this mask look. It doesn't look scary at all. He looked like he just did some meth. Big neck ass, tree stump neck ass. This is horrible. The friend who's here just to show off her body is in the pool and she's taking pictures. Whenever she starts to look at the photo she just took, she sees that Pooh is in the background of one of them so she gets scared and then she starts looking around for a little while and then she's just like ah uh, oh well you're not gonna ruin my night wait whatever you're not ruining my holiday you fat freak yeah her goofy ass definitely deserves to die <laughs> So they did have terrible CGI money. I guess they just didn't want to use it for lightning. Maria and therapist number two end up finding her body outside and then they go into the house scared. They basically go to tell the other girls that the whole clique is about to get murked because it's a killer. Maria thinks that it's the guy who was stalking her. I get so that was the whole reason they added that storyline. I guess this is some sort of fake character development. Piglet catches two friends trying to escape, knocks one of them out and the other one jumps back into the pool for whatever reason. And instead of getting out of the pool and running towards the door, which was her original plan, she just stands here and watches to see what Piglet has planned for her. So he ends up picking up this chain to knock her ass out with it. And once again, all she has to do, y'all, is just get out of the fucking pool. But does she do that? Nope. She lets Piglet get in the water and hit a home run on her ass. Not gonna lie, this is the only good kill scene to me, but this movie is beyond bad that I really just don't care for it still. Who ends up finding the girl who was knocked out by the pool and he ends up tying her up and then he shows her his pimp hand? I guess <laughs> I don't know what's going on in this movie, y'all. 
but for some reason he didn't kill her he just slapped her to sleep so maria and therapist number two end up finding her and saving her they also find christopher robin and end up untying him too they also find another person tied up this random lady she was actually in a scene earlier like at a gas station but i promise y'all it doesn't matter she then starts giving exposition talking about how the animals are crossbreeds and that's how they can talk and kill people and stuff even though they already told us that at the beginning of the movie and then she started talking all this shit like oh wait till y'all cut me loose I'm gonna let them have it since they've been attacking me and blah blah blah. When she finally gets the chance to kill them, she goes out quick as fuck. Really, nigga? One of the girls ends up knocking Piglet out, but how she dragged his fat ass way over here and tied him up, I have no clue how. But then she turns this nigga into some Thanksgiving ham. <laughs> Once Pooh hears this, of course he comes to kill her, so another person is dead. Maria and her therapist end up finding these guys, and then they're like, Pooh is chasing us, and they're like, who's Pooh? And then once Pooh finally arrives, it's supposed to be like this, like, oh man, look how badass these guys is. And it's like, nah, all we get is this very weak fight scene. <laughs> After they're done, Pooh gets pissed off and raises his pimp hand again, and turns one of them into Two-Face. <laughs> Maria and the therapist end up driving away, but of course Pooh finds them, he stops them, he takes the therapist, so now it's her time to die. Just as he's about to kill Maria, Christopher comes in and saves the day. They try to make this like so heroic. They got this heroic music playing and you're just supposed to care, but you don't. But of course Pooh isn't dead He gets up and he stabs Maria several times And Chris is just standing over her crying Like I understand to show you know sympathy towards somebody But he's crying as if like he just knew this woman his whole life And then she looks up at Christopher and like Go get away while you can and then we see Christopher crying. He looks back one last time. And then he just runs away. And that's how the movie ends. So were we supposed to be rooting for Christopher this whole time for him to escape? Because I didn't care. Were we supposed to root for Maria because I didn't care? This movie is only an hour and like 24 or something minutes, maybe 30. But it feels like it would never, ever end. In. because you don't care for these characters there's no character development there's not really no plot no plot twist just dry bad acting and pointless kill scenes i heard they already making the sequel to this i'm not even gonna waste my time with that because i know it's just gonna be just as ridiculous as this was tigger wasn't in here because he's not public domain yet and i hope he's not public domain for a very very long time <sighs> that was my review of winnie the pooh blood and honey i hope y'all enjoyed it if you haven't seen this movie i hope this was enough for you not to see it and i'm out